grandson the right thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light. So if you saw my community page, I posted a scripture from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. And it would be wise of you all if you went and just did a quick search yourself real quick. Grab your Bible, go to chapter 1 of Jeremiah so that you could read what we're about to be talking about today. Okay? So take a moment, grab your Bible or your phone or your app, whatever, and go to Jeremiah chapter 1. And you'll see that Abba is telling Jeremiah about himself. You see, he's telling Jeremiah about himself. He's saying, I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you before I formed you. And I made you into something. Excuse me, y'all. I'm putting my glove on. And I made you into something, and though you don't know it or understand it yet, it is what you are. That's what Abba is telling Jeremiah there. And Jeremiah's nervous. He's like, oh, man, ah, I'm a, I'm a babe. I can't talk. And Abba was like, don't say that. Because I put my words in your mouth. And then he goes on to tell him the position he has placed him in. And what does he say there? I've set you above kings, nations, thrones, all of that. I set you above. And see, this isn't really a surprise if you understand what happens when you keep Abba's commandments. If you break his commandments, what happens? You're at the bottom. But if you keep his commandments, I will set thee above all nations that are upon the face of this earth. So God doesn't lie. If you keep his way, then you get the results, you see? So, in this case, with Jeremiah, he says, I've set you above all of these people. Why? So that you can do some rearranging. Correct? Is that what you read there? You're going to pluck down, tear down, build up, plant. You're going to reorganize the earth. <laughs> now, how is Jeremiah going to reorganize the earth? with his mouth. You see that? But Abba says he has, has he has empowered him to be able to do that, to set above all the kings. So if there was any kings on the earth during Jeremiah's day, Jeremiah was above them because Abba set him up there. That's called king of kings. It's just that people don't understand it because they don't understand the prophecies of the son of man. They don't understand saviors shall come up upon Mount Zion. They don't understand that. So they get all confounded. Well, Abba don't want you to be confounded or confused because he's not the God of confusion. He makes everything go together like Legos clicking together. He makes it go together perfectly, in other words. And one of those things, to show how perfect he is, he gave you a clue. You go down there, 10, 11, verse 10 or 11, one of those verses, he'll say, what about Jeremiah? He'll ask him, he'll say, what did you see? Jeremiah, what do you see? And what does Jeremiah say he saw? A rod of an almond branch. Now, if you've been following the Grand Center of Right Thought, like I said, just check my community page and see. You will see I gave you guys some scriptures and some understanding about the rod of an almond tree. You notice it was very specific about the kind of branch that it was. Why did Jeremiah see a branch? Do you know why? <laughs> Do you know why Jeremiah saw that branch that was budded, that almond branch? Well, if you've been following my community page, you should know because there's a prophecy about a man whose name is the branch to come in the last days to sit upon a throne of judgment and to judge the nations of this earth. Just like we read about Jeremiah, to take up, to pluck up, to tear down, to build up, to plant, to destroy. With you, I will do it. And so just as it is that day, it is this day. 
because just as in the coming of the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the son of man. What did he call Jeremiah? What did he call Ezekiel? What did he call anybody else who had the spirit upon them? What was Yahushua called? Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? It never changes, guys. It never changes. So then the son of man of the end times is going to be the same way. And so God gave you a mystery about that son of man of the last days, saying that he is a branch of an almond tree. Now read your scriptures. Behold the man whose name is the branch. Now what does the branch almond tree signify? Brotherly love, like I've told you. That's why Aaron, who was Moses' prophet. I'm going to slow this down so you guys can grasp it because I know it's heavy. I know it's new. I know you've never heard it. So many people pay so much attention to, to Moses when the children of Israel and Exodus and everything that they forget about Aaron. They forget about what he represents. Remember, God said, Moses, I make you as God. And Aaron shall be your prophet. So then, if we look at the children of Israel with Moses and Aaron, then what God is saying is, just like God and Jeremiah is Moses and Aaron. <laughs> you hear that today? Just like Yahushua and John is Moses and Aaron. Just like I've taught you guys on my community page through the scriptures. And so, that second in command or that prophet of the hand-selected person of God is the almond branch. He is the branch because Christ is the true vine. Moses would be the true vine. Aaron would be the branch. That's why he had the branch in his hand. Aaron's branch, not Moses. Aaron had his own staff that budded. It's called Shiloh, to he whom it belongs. That staff belongs to somebody. And it will not bud until he who belongs grabs it. Do you understand that today? So what am I saying? The message of the kingdom will be without fruit until he who belongs comes and takes that mantle up. That man is named the branch. When he stands up, his ministry will bear fruit of brotherly love. Love your neighbor as yourself because it is his message to give. He is the anointed one to give it. A man cannot give a message unless he first be anointed by God. God has to call you to your office. So if he hasn't called you, then what are you doing standing up there with the rod in your hand? It won't bear no fruit because you're not anointed to do so. Remember, he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. It ain't just happen. You have to be anointed. Now was Aaron anointed? Yes. And what does it say about his anointing? It says that he was anointed and it was just like brotherly love. It was just like brotherly love. Read it in Psalms. That oil ran down Aaron's beard, even down into the skirts of his garments. Wow, how beautiful it is for brothers to dwell in, in unity. Psalm 133. Why does it say Aaron? That, that brotherly love is like the oil that ran down on Aaron's beard. Why does the Bible say that? Because he was the anointed one to preach it. He preached brotherly love unlike any other because he's anointed to. He's chosen to. Well, so it is in the last days with the branch. Brotherly love has not profited in the world, has it? It has not bore fruit in the world, has it? It's because Shiloh has not come. To he whom the message belongs has not come yet. That's why it says, when he comes, the branch. I know, they don't know this. The world doesn't know it. God says they don't know about it. If you read the prophets like Isaiah, God says the people don't know. He says, none would hear me. None would listen when I lifted up mine elect and said, this is who I'm giving to you. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't hear him. I've already told you that. So do you have eyes to see today, little fly? Why Jeremiah saw a rod? And then what did Abba say to him when he saw that? He said, what do you see? He said, I see that rod, man. That almond branch that budded. He said, you saw well. 
So in other words, you saw the right thing and I will perform it, see? I'm gonna perform the thing that you just saw. What? I'm gonna bring forth my servant named the branch. The whole prophets talk about that exact thing happening. Behold the man whose name is the branch. I will bring forth my servant, mine elected, whom I shall uphold with my right hand. It's all through the Bible there. It's just that people deny it because they don't know it. They've been taught the Bible by the world, where the world lies to you. <laughs> the world lies to you. The world has deceived you. You see that? The world has deceived you. So yeah, it's strange when you hear the truth at first, but that don't mean it ain't true. Because like I said, can any of you tell me why he saw that rod? Why Jeremiah saw that? Why it was that in particular? Did you know it had anything to do with Aaron? Did you know what Aaron was called to do and what, what his ministry was? Do you know why he was anointed? Do you know what he was anointed to preach? See, if you come to the School of Marvelous Light, you'll know all those answers. How did that happen then? Who told me to tell you this? That's my question. <laughs> Y'all know who did. Because see, it's, it's one thing to hear a new thing and it's wrong. Even though it's new, it's wrong. But it's one thing to hear a new thing that sounds strange, but it's true. Even though you've never heard it, it's true. Then you gotta say, well, wait a minute, hold on. How did this nigga get this truth? <laughs> How did he get that understanding? That's what they said about Yahusha. That's what they said about Peter, I mean, Peter and John. These being ignorant men, ignorant men, from whence have they gained this knowledge? See? How the hell you know that? Abba told it to me. It all about who you is. And I've never lied to you guys about who I am. I never did. I've always told you the same thing from the beginning. And now it's being confirmed more so. Abba always is confirming it. He's always confirming it, his truth. And the prophecy, and the prophecy that a branch would come out of the stem of Jesse and it would bud, it would sprout. That's the whole point. Aaron's rod sprouted. Everybody else's rod didn't. And why? Because they were not anointed to preach the gospel of brotherly love. Aaron was. And that's why his rod budded and he was chosen. Do you see? Do you see it? So that's why Jeremiah saw the exact same thing. When I judge this land, when I uproot kingdoms, when I tear those things up, it'd be because the branch is on the earth. It'd be the, the sprout that budded is on the earth. That's what God's saying. That's why he said, I'm gonna bring this to pass. Abba, it works in riddles and parables and in mysteries, right? Okay, did y'all notice that that's the man's name that's in the Bible that's in all capital letters and you don't think God did that for a reason that he put branch in all capital letters in his Bible? But yet when you ask somebody about the branch, they cannot break the prophecy down to you at all, not one bit. Matter of fact, they have never even heard of it. They will either tell you, I've said this before, I'll say it again. And this should furthermore prove the proof of who I am. If you ask somebody who was the man named the branch, they will either tell you it's Jesus Christ or they will say they don't know. And either way, you got their ass in a trick bag if you know, like I do. That's why I ask it. And everybody that I've asked that question to has had to submit to the truth when they hear it. Wow, I didn't know that, grandson. No, you didn't know it because it wasn't given to you to know it. It's only given to the anointed one to know it. That proves he's anointed. That proves it. See that? That proves that it is his who it belongs to. That doctrine, that, that, that breakdown, that truth, that download, whatever words y'all wanna call it. That's the proof that it belonged to him, Shiloh. That's the proof. It is his authority to speak that truth, he's anointed. And until he comes, we will just have to wait and we will not bear fruit until he comes. Because there will be no sprouting until he who belongs to takes that rod in his hand. Then it sprouts just like Aaron's did.
because Aaron was anointed. That's why Psalm 133 told you he was anointed and it told you what he was anointed with brotherly love and that's why it mentions it first and tells you that it's just like when Aaron got anointed the truth of brotherly love came down into this earth because the he who it belongs had picked up his scepter that's what Shiloh means to he who it belongs it's that scepter did you not know inside of the Ark of the Covenant that was stolen by the Romans did you not know what was inside of it the tablets of stone, of the testimony, some of the manna from the wilderness to remind them. Okay, come on, what else in there? Aaron's rod that budded is in there too. What's up with this almond branch always popping up? Because that's God's final prophecy. That's God's final way that he's gonna to come to this earth and judge it at last. Now let's see, what is the purpose of the branch? For all of you who now know this prophecy, what is his purpose? What does he do? He shall judge, not with the seeing of his eyes, nor with the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge. So he's a judge. Now go back to Jeremiah and see what he said before he saw the branch. What did God tell him he would do? Judge! Lift up, tear down, break down, plant. That's judging. That's changing it. So it is in the end times. So it is at the end. When the man whose name is the branch would finally sprout up out of his place and he would be an ensign to the nations that it's time. That it's time. Things are about to change because that branch has stood up and it is he whose it belongs to. That's why can't nobody preach it like he can because he's anointed. He's chosen to speak it. If, and if you're not chosen to speak it, then you're just going off of your own understanding. You're just preaching things to people that you think are fanciful, that you think sound good, that make people feel some type of good vibration. That's all you're interested in preaching. But you're not preaching the truth of simplicity, of brotherly love. That's what gives us eternal life. Now, I need you to tell me it's not. Now, don't you all want eternal life? No, I just gave you the answer how to get it. And I didn't give you a bunch of extra bullshit either. That's because I'm anointed to preach the truth to you. See, it's real simple. If somebody says that they are something, then when you need them to perform the task, they should be able to do it, right? You took your car to a mechanic. Nigga can't fix it. What's up, bro? Yep, yep. You took your car to a mechanic, but he can't fix it. He don't know how to fix it, but he says he's a mechanic. So just because he says he is means he is? No, he's got to perform the things that let you know that he truly is what he says. So in this case, the branch has to preach brotherly love. That's what he teaches because he's anointed to preach that. Now, if somebody claims to be the branch, then let's just see if that's what they preach. Because they cannot preach it. In other words, it cannot bear fruit in you unless it's him. Hear me today, Israel. The preaching cannot bear inter eternal fruit in you unless it is being preached to you by the one God anointed to preach it to you. So if all of these people have been walking in the earth claiming that they were teaching brotherly love, then how come the world lacks it so much? How come the world hasn't been in an upheaval and flipped upside down and kings put down and things planted in its place and things broke down and uprooted? How come that's not happening if somebody already did this already that y'all say didn't did it? Because it ain't been done. That's why. Until now, it's being fulfilled in your hearing. And then people hear me say that, they go, oh my God, who does man make himself to be? What did Yahushua say? He grabbed the book of Isaiah, he stood up in front of the people, and he said, today this is being fulfilled in your hearing. And he sat down. Take up your cross and follow me. Okay, today this is being fulfilled in your hearing. I'm going to do what he said to do. You didn't know. <laughs> Let's be honest. You didn't know why Jeremiah saw that branch, did you? 
unless you've been talking to me. Other than that, did you know why? Just be honest. <laughs> Just be real with yourself. Did you know that's why Jeremiah saw that almond branch? Because it's a prophecy about a man in the end times who will come and uproot, lift kings from their thrones? Of course. Revelation already told you that's going to happen. It says the man child was caught up to his throne. The prophecy states, you shall rule with a rod of iron and you shall crush the nations with that rod. The rod is his mouth. The rod he shall slay with the rod of his mouth. That's the branch, isn't it? So it's the same prophecy. See, back in the day, when grandma used to get mad at you, she would tell you, go to the tree outside and go get me a switch. Because she's mad at you, she's going to give you a spanking. Well, switch means branch. And she wants you to go get one off the tree so that she can whoop you with it. So that she can purge out your uncleanness with a branch. Now, I need you to go to the Old Testament and see what Abba uses to purge sin out with. What does he use? Because he changes not. So if he used it then, he will use it now. What did he use to purge sin in the Old Testament? He used a hyssop branch. So Abba uses a branch to purge you of your iniquities, your sins, your nastiness. So how will he purge the earth? With the branch. <laughs> it's so simple. That's why the rod of his mouth whoop you. That's how God whoops. The, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So does he change? So then when, when Abba deal with you, what is he dealing with you with? The word. That's how he judges. That's how he uproots. That's how he tears kings from their thrones with the words of his mouth. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't let this man know who he is because if he finds out who he is, then the wrath of the lamb is gonna come upon all of us and we're gonna to have to run because we haven't been living in our, our right lands. We haven't been calling people by the right names. And now the corrector is here to beat our ass for lying. We gotta run from the lamb. See, see, lamb means harmless. It means, it means not harmful, not, not a danger to you. He's harmless. That's what lamb means. So if the lamb then got so angry at you, he's full of wrath, then you must have really messed up, world. You must have really effed up, world. And the world has, and you would all agree that it has. And the thing that it's effed up with is brotherly love. It's nothing else. You guys can look all day to try to figure out a way to, to serve God without loving each other. You can't. Like Ren used to say on Ren and Stimpy, you stupid idiot. You stupid idiot. You can't. Now, keep trying, dumbass. Keep trying, you dumbass niggas. Going around thinking that you can serve God without loving your neighbor. He who says he loved God and yet loveth not his brother is a liar and the truth is not in him. So let God be true and let every man be a liar. And that's what the hell we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. This world's changing. Things are getting different. The energies are changing. Why? God told you how. You just don't never listen to God. But if you did, then you would know what's happening in your own people. But what happens when a prophet comes to his own people? See, when you know the word, then you know what's happening. Oh, well, grandson, if you were really the branch, the grandson, if you were really the grandson, then your people would love you. They would raise you up and make you a king. Did they do that to Yahushua? Well, no. So then why would they do it to me, his son? <laughs> why would they hate the father and then love his son? No. If you have not the son, you have not the father. Shit, because they won. Your people would do this. Your people. No. If I was true, then my people would reject me. Because according to the master... Uh, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own hometown, his own kin, in his own nation. So do you see what my people will feel about me? And they do. And I'm telling you they do because I've been preaching for years and they just scoff 
they wave their head, they wag their head, they walk off, they say, grandson, you know what you're talking about. Oh, you're blaspheming. Oh, you're nothing. Oh, or sometimes they just stay silent because they can't say nothing. And they just sit in the woodwork and make, wait for me to make a mistake so they can attack me. But there ain't going to be no damn mistakes made over here. Ain't going to be no damn mistakes made over here. Abba's work is being done. You're fighting against him. Now do you understand why he said, why does the heathen imagine a vain thing and fighting against Abba and his anointed one? See? You're imagining a vain thing. You think you can fight against the grandson of the right thought. I told you, if you run up on me, you're going to fuck up yourself trying to hurt me. What you doing trying to hurt God's servant for? How are you trying to serve God and hurt his servant? He says, touch not mine anointing and do my prophets no harm. You want to make them your enemies because they tell you the damn truth. They tell you shit you ain't never heard before and you put it in your pocket and you run off telling other people as if you came up with it. People are wicked as hell and that's why I have no problem doing what Abba tells me to do and keeping his counsel neither. Oh yeah, I used to buck against it when Abba would tell me to judge something or do something with my mouth. I would say, why me, Father? Read Jeremiah! I would say, why me, Father? I'm just a man like everybody else walking around in this place. He says, you're not just like everybody else. Everybody else wasn't born in obscurity like you, grandson. Everybody else wasn't tucked away and hidden and taken to the Philippine Islands. Their whole childhood and formative years to be brought up in a totally different way than these people of the West. I shall call my son from the East and he shall come to my foot and I will put my words in his mouth. So another part about the branch is you gotta come from the East. Do I? Yes. Do you? No. We not about to play no more with you niggas out here. All y'all wanna do is steal, kill, and destroy. And you think Abba was not gonna come down here and deal with you. Why? Because you had all the niggas down at the bottom struggling? Struggling for a breath every day, they don't have time to talk to the Most High, well now you got one that got time. I got all the time for my father, and I'm gonna give him everything I got so he can give me everything he got and I can give it to you. And we can get the hell up out of this fucking captivity that I can't stand walking through every day. Oppression maketh the wise man mad. And how y'all put up with this every day, I don't fucking know. Shit. Y'all be so offended at what come out of my mouth? Of course you do. You're offended at the truth. It doesn't matter how the truth is said. And once you become a man, you realize that and you put childish things away. Oh, that's bad if I say that. Oh, God made me when I say that. That's childish way of thinking. God look at your heart. What's coming out your heart? All I know is coming out my heart and I stand justified before the Father, my heart wide open. Because I don't seek to please myself. I don't seek to judge myself for what I do and say whether it's good or not. I let Abba tell me what's good or not. And because you all would not submit to that, he didn't give it to you. He said, I look, but no man would let, no man would listen. No man would turn to me. No heart would turn back to me. But I saw one. And so I came to him and I rested upon him and put my spirit upon him. And now you hear it coming out and you can't deny it. You can't deny it. You ain't gotta worry about what's coming out your mouth when your heart right. You ain't gotta worry about how it sound when your heart right. You ain't gotta worry about how it look when your heart right. But when your heart ain't right, all the fuck you care about is how it look and how it sound. Cause all you care about is fooling man. When God ain't fooled, he ain't mocked neither. By your little outward show, your little dressing up like a fucking clown. He ain't impressed by it. All of you rich of this land, going and building bunkers, you think it's gonna save you. You think it's gonna save you. Next time a nigga want to take you to court and they put your hand on a Bible for you to swear on it, open it up and start reading it to them niggas. And when they tell you you can't, then you call them hypocrites to their face, including the judge. Don't have me swear on no Bible I can't read in front of you. Don't have me swear on a Bible I can't open and pull the words out of it. But that's what they do because they want it to look honest. They want it to look real. They want it to look like what they're doing is from God. Yeah, put your hand on this Bible. How about I put my hand on it and open it? How about that? And I read what it say. 
Oh, 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 but, 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 but. We're just going through a ritual. Yeah, an outward ritual to make shit look like something. When it ain't shit all along. Because I tell you right now, if you clean the inside of the, I mean, if you clean the outside of the cup, but you don't clean the inside, then what did it profit you? What did it profit you? Nothing. So then why do you waste energy doing something that doesn't profit you? Will you go to work all day today for free without getting paid a dime? Would you do it? Y'all are quick to answer that question. Hell no. Okay, so then why would you do something in your life that doesn't actually give you anything for it? Which is outwardly. Y'all know it very well. You bought a nice outfit. You were happy as hell when you bought it because you thought you looked good as hell in it. So you put the shit on. You went to your little shindig, did the fucking tootsie roll, <laughs> did a fucking backspin, posed in front of your friends, and then went back home, took the suit off that you were wearing and hung it up in your closet, and that's where it was for the rest of the night. And so what did it give you? Hey, man, I was the man, though. They thought I was fly when I was wearing it. Everything you about to say is about to be in the past. I need you to tell me what it has residually given you. What is it giving you now? Well, I'm not wearing it right now, so it's not giving me anything. Well, then that ain't good for me. Fuck that. I need something that I ain't got to put on for it to work. <laughs> See, I need something I ain't got to wear. So I need something within me that can work. So everywhere that I go, I can use the power that's available to me. I ain't got a way to put it on and impress people with it. I'm not trying to impress you with this power. Did you read the power that Abba granted into Jeremiah? Did you read the power that, the, that Abba granted into the branch? Did you read the power he is granting unto them? To sit above everybody else. To judge. Since no other man will judge right, I need to choose a servant that will. That's simple. Now I need you to tell me, honestly, from your heart, is the world right now keeping God's commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. Is that the protocol that the world runs on? So then the kings of the earth have failed you. All of them have failed you. Because why would a king set himself up above a people and deny God put him there? And deny that God gave him the power to be there? Why would he do that? If he's doing something righteous for you. Oh, I love that king. I love him, him ruling over me. Oh, God says that that ain't a good way to be. I'm your king. You don't want me? Nope, we don't want you. Give us a man. All right. I give you some men. And look how they've done you. Look how these kings of the earth do each other. Look how they kill each other. Look how they set each other up. Doesn't matter what nation. Doesn't matter how much you love your leader. If he ain't down with the status quo, what do they do with him? They kill him. So God sees that. So do you think righteousness is going forth in the land if you can get a president that's beloved by the people like John F. Kennedy and set him right there in front of the whole nation and completely noodle him in front of his wife where his wife jumps on the back of the car and grabbing pieces of his brain and skull? Yep, that looks like brotherly love to me. That looks like a nation that loves themselves. Yep, sure does. Hey, Abraham, I don't believe in none of that shit you're talking about. Pow! Noodled him. Uh, it's okay. Just put that nigga on five dollar bills and remember him and build a memorial. world wicked y'all so if you know it's wicked then you know that God's people haven't been ruling it that God's elect has not been the one in charge because if God's elect was in charge then there would be brotherly love flourishing on the earth because that's the scepter he got in his hand we've proven that 
over and over and over and over. Read Psalm 133 again and then see. If brotherly love isn't symbolized by a rod that buds, an almond branch. It always is and it always will be. Because he is the second in command to the leader. I'm going to give you some more mystery. So if you're willing to open your ears and withstand the flame that come out of my mouth. Oh my God, why is he spitting so much such hot fire? Oh boy. Simple, simple, simple. But I'm going to give you another mystery. The second in command is the one whose it belongs to. The rod of brotherly love. That's who the rod belongs to. So now Aaron owned the staff. See? So at that time, Aaron held that staff of brotherly love. And he was anointed to teach that doctrine to the people. Alrighty? Now after Aaron, who did the, who did the scepter pass to? Do 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 do, skilly li di di, do lu lu do do do, skilly di di di, skilly di di di, skilly di di, skilly li di di. Uh huh. Who did it pass to after Aaron? <clears throat> Yahusha told you who it passed to. Now, here comes the mystery. Back in Egypt. Pharaoh ruled everything. So God chose somebody to sit in second in command and hold that scepter. Who was that man? What was his name? His name was Joseph. Now, did Joseph have to show his brotherly love? If you know the story, then you already know that that shit about to lace you with hot fire right there. That's all that it was about with him. Joseph and his brothers and their relationship. That's all it was about with Joseph, was overcoming the hate, overcoming the ridicule. At the end, being able to forgive and say, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. My brothers, I still love you. I love you, brother. That's why he was anointed and he was the rainbow man. If you don't think he's the rainbow man, what kind of coat did he wear? All these men are foreshadowings of the branch who was going to rise up and second in command unto Yahusha. That man is John. John, today, that's your mother. Mary, that's your son. Well, it sounds like you're making John you, Yahusha, since you're Mary's son and she's your mother. Why are you giving that position to John? Because he's the one in my bosom, the branch sticking out of the true vine. He's the branch. He's gonna carry the scepter forward of brotherly love. Now read John's epistles and see. I'm trying to tell you that every time God chooses someone to hold that scepter, they're going to speak about brotherly love after that. They're not going to talk about bullshit. They're going to talk about brotherly love. I proved it with John. Is that what John teaches you in his epistles? If a man say he loved God and he loved not his brother, he a liar. See? Brotherly love. Loving one another. That's going to be his message because that's what he's anointed to preach if he's the second in command. So Joseph showed you by his action that he was loving his brothers, even though they hated him and ridiculed him and did evil shit to him. He showed you that he forgave them and he loved them and took care of them and provided for them.